What's up, y'all? It's Bianca Belair, the EST of WWE, and you are tuned into Rolling Out Star Studio. What's going on, everybody? Back again here for Rolling Out Star Studio, your host, Malik Brown. Of course, when I say Star Studio, we have an amazing, talented person in the building. And today, y'all, I'm with somebody special. <laughs> Today, I'm with Bianca Belair, WWE superstar, the EST of the WWE. Bianca, what's going on? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you so much again for coming on, speak with us um, about this great partnership that you have with NBC. So um, I guess we can start there, of course. NBC partnered with them, and you're doing something called Sunday Scaries. Uh, let, let the people know all about Sunday Scaries and, and what that what that's about yeah okay so i'm teaming up with nbc sports to take this like you said take the scaries out of sunday and have a scary good sunday uh by watching sunday night football on nbc and peacock and basically what the sunday scaries are is the feelings of like anxiety that you get right before the uh the sunday before your work week and um they say like 80 percent of professionals deal with the sunday scaries i know i do especially like being a, pro a professional um wrestler and being in WWE and just being in the work world, I definitely experienced that anxiety. So what NBC Sports is doing is they're having these Sunday, um, these scary good Sunday night watch parties where they're making football more than just a game, where it's bringing everybody together through the love of football. It's giving everybody like a one of a kind, unique experience to watch football. You come together, it's, um, you have good food, it's camaraderie, it's giveaways, it's special guest appearances. And it's just a way to like get rid of your Sunday scaries and jumpstart your week off with like a positive note with like a championship uh, mentality. So I was excited about it because I had the Sunday scaries and because football has been a huge part of my life since I was a kid. I always say football was the first sport I ever watched is what got me into sports. My brother played football, my brother's a high school football coach uh my mom and my dad are both football fans like I grew up in Knoxville Tennessee where it was a huge uh, football town we got the Tennessee Titans so like it was very organic for me and I watched Sunday night football with my husband I watched it with my family when I when growing up when I was home so I'm super excited about this partnership love that you know it, it's crazy um calling it the Sunday scaries and, and Sunday anxiety. When I first heard it, I was like, this is, this is a, actually a real thing. I mean, yeah. people go through it about like 80%, but people go through it all the time. I mean, you're thinking about the next day, like, Oh my God, like you really can't even enjoy your Sunday because you think about Monday. So. Exactly. And that's the thing. That's why I like about it. And I feel like NBC sports, like what they're, what they're doing with, um with like tackling the Sunday scaries by using uh NFL, like, on Sunday nights is so smart and it, I feel like it's a form of self-care and I always say that like self-care I feel like sometimes at least for me it used to have like this, I used to have this mis misconception about self-care of like I used to think like self-care was so delicate and like you had to like go to the spa or light candles and no self-care sometimes can be getting down sitting on the couch or going to you know somewhere with your friends and socializing uh, camaraderie, cheering, booing for your football team, like being social, just like whatever it is to ease your mind. Like it, self care comes in all forms, and it comes in the form of now the sun, um, scary good Sunday night. So it's 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 very creative, and I love what they're doing. You know, for you, um, talking about Sunday anxiety, could you give us some tips on what you do to cure your Sunday anxieties and and prepare for for the week ahead? Yeah, I mean, for one, I do watch Sunday Night Football on Sundays. Uh, when, like I said, if my parents are in town or if I'm home, I'm watching with them. I wish I was actually in town Sunday um, when San Fran plays the the Cowboys because my daddy is a San Fran fan, uh, has been since I was a kid. Every year for Christmas, I get him something 49ers. Uh, and my uncle, uh, Uncle Eric, he is a Dallas Cowboy fan. And so every time they play each other, my daddy dresses up as San Fran. My uncle dresses up as the Dallas Cowboys. My mama wears a referee t-shirt. I have a picture. Like, I am not lying. This is what they do. And it's so funny. Uh, and now I watch with my husband. And it's it's fun to watch with him. Um, but 
you know, if his team is playing at night, I more so watch him than I watch the game because I watch his reaction. But, for, I mean, I watch Sunday night football, and usually we're on the road, too, on Sunday. So it's not just me watching with my husband, who's Montez Ford. It's his tag team partner, Angelo Dawkins, is there, too. But for me, honestly, my Sundays are my rest days. Um, I go so hard during the week. I wrestle usually on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Sometimes we have a Monday night raw on Monday. So it's all about, like, knowing when to sit down and just rest for me. So, um that's what I do like on Sundays. I'm watching football. I'm hanging with my family, with my friends, and I'm resting. And you said you're a Titans fan. Titan, Titans fan? Or- well, so by default, because I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee. So our team was Nashville, the next city over. So by default, like I'm a hometown girl. So I'm always going to like ride for, my home, for the hometown team. <laughs> Games in, no anxiety. You 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 chilling back. You you're relaxing. You, you like what you're seeing from your team. You like what you're seeing from your team so far. Uh, you know, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the team. I mean, you know, um, it's it's so hard though because I have to like I, I'm I'm like a fan for so many teams by default too. Like the Chicago Bears. My husband loves Chicago Bears too. So by default, I have to be like encouraging for him when when they're on. <laughs> you know, so and I'm a big Kansas City fan, so. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm liking what all my teams are bringing this year. You know, you kind of described your schedule already about you know wrestling on on Mondays, Fridays. Um, you just through the week, of course. I mean, Sunday anxiety. I mean, I feel like it can start even before Sunday. Um, mm-hmm. you know what what are you doing before Sundays? Uh, to kind of prevent that Sunday anxiety. Yeah. So for one, it's always staying active. So I always talk about like how I have to rest, but if I rest too long, then I just get like in a bad mood and I I actually become like more lazy. So I stay active during the week. So for me to like relieve my stress and keep my anxiety at, you know, a low level, I'm always working out. I love to work out now for someone else, you know, being active might be in other forms. You know, you can find other forms of ways that you enjoy to stay active, but I love working out. I love reading. I read a lot. Um, I, if, if, well, I used to like to cook, but I don't have time to cook now. When I'm home, I'm too tired to cook. Uh, <laughs> but I also like to just try to uh, find time to like be social, spend time with my husband when we're home, uh, try to catch up with my friends when I'm home, uh, meet up with them. And so those are like, those are really the things that I like to do when I'm um, like throughout the week to like keep my anxiety level low. You know, going on into what, you know, what you do best, of course, uh, you know, being the longest reigning black champion in WWE history, you know, just talk about or just give us insight, you know, on the joy, the excitement of of being a wrestler. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's so much I could say Um, and all good things, all great things. I'm honored. I'm blessed to be in this position. Um, It's a lot of responsibility that comes with this position, a lot of responsibility that I put on myself, Um, you know, just being someone that's been able to to go out there and show up as myself and be unapologetically me and in the process uh, have so many accomplishments and create so much history and be representation. It's really cool because I'm not just out there for myself because sometimes like when you're at the top, it can get very lonely. Um, you know, sometimes when you accomplish one thing, you get like a lot of congratulations and then you accomplish something else like okay cool that's good and you accomplish it again and again and again and it, like it slowly starts getting like a little bit more quiet but when you are out there with a purpose to represent and be representation and you have a why and you have a passion you're never by yourself and um you always have the fans that are behind you your fans that are behind you your fan base and um it's it's, it's been great it's it's very hectic. Well, it was like very hectic uh, being the longest reigning uh, black women's champion or uh, champion of all time. It was very hectic. The schedule was crazy, uh, but it was all worth it. And it's just, it's cool to be the person at the top, but it's um also just, you know, looking at everybody that came before me too. And, you know, the foundation that they set and the record that I broke and one day it's going to be someone that comes along and breaks my record. I mean, records are meant to be broken and that's how, you know, when things are evolving and I think that that's the most important thing to realize it's like yes I did break a record uh I broke someone else's record to become the longest reigning uh black champion of, of all time but that means that things are evolving so when someone breaks my record that means it's evolving even more and so that's the important thing but 
it's really cool, you know, but I do feel like I, I do feel like I put like a lot of pressure on myself to where I was always constantly worried about like trying to do things the right way for representation. But then I or just to just, you know, just do things the right way. And I started realizing I wasn't at one point I was focusing on that instead of just bringing myself. So it's like it's not about doing things the right way. It's about doing things my way. And that's the right way to do it. And just to be organic and and, you know, be able to relate to people. And so it's been great. <laughs> I love that. I love that answer. You know, you talk a lot uh, about representation and, you know, being a black champion, being a black WWE superstar, uh, you're, you're, you're a role model. I mean, I mean, you're a role model for, of course, the young women out there that are in sports and, you know, want to get in a profession. Um, just how does it feel to be that role model and be able to kind of, uh, see how everybody's viewing you and like, yeah, I, I want to be something. I want to be something big. It feels great. You know, I call myself the EST of WWE, which means I'm the strongest, the fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the greatest, the best. And I, you know, I always want to encourage people to be the best at whatever it is that they do. So, you know, I love that I have this message that isn't just, it doesn't just stick to being in the ring it can go outside the ring and my favorite thing is like when I have meet and greets and have people come up to me and tell me that they went after something in life that has absolutely nothing to do with wrestling you know um they you know, have one girl come to me saying I I'm going back to school because you know I, I I'm in I'm inspired by you um I applied for that job that I was intimid intimidated about um you know just encouraging kids to like try new things and it's okay if you're you know it's okay if you're nervous just don't be scared go out there and just be the best do what you can do um so I love that like my message can transcend to other you know other areas but it's um it's great you know like I always say I I look at my role models and how they inspired me I wouldn't be who I am without my role models and so now to see that somebody sees a role model in me and I'm impacting them in a way, in a way, a positive way. That means everything to me. So that's really what this is all about. Like my legacy, it's, yeah, I want my legacy to be like one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time, uh, a history breaker. Uh, you know, I, I want to be known as like being multifaceted and not being in a box, but at the same time, I don't want my legacy to, like, I, I say it all the time, I don't want my legacy to just be about, like, what I've done and what I've accomplished, but I want people to, to remember, like, how I made them feel and how I inspired them, and, like, my legacy goes past me, and it, like, inspires other people to create their own legacy. Love that, love that. Well, look, you're definitely inspiring and, and motivating others to do, to do what they want to do in the future, and we appreciate you. Uh, you know, you talked earlier about how football has kind of just been a part of your life. Uh, yeah <laughs> if Bianca could could step on the field I, what position what position are we playing what position are we going out there are we are we are we throwing the ball are we running the ball are we catching the ball are we on the defensive side what are we really doing what are we you know doing? I think you know of course you know you want to be the person you want to be the quarterback you know you want to be like the leader of the team you want to be the glue and, you know, you might want to be a wide receiver where you get to score the touchdowns, you're running back where you get to, like, blast through the line. I would love to play those positions, but honestly, like, I want to be – I think I want to be on defense. I want to be, like, a cornerback or a safety because <laughs> – You want to hit somebody. You want to hit somebody. <laughs> I want to make them fumble, and then I can pick the ball up, and then I can run it back and score. So I can play defense and offense at the same time. And hey, you won't be Deion Sanders. That, 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 look, hey. <laughs> Listen, I want to be Deion Sanders. Listen, Deion Sanders, he actually uh, messaged me and told me that I had inspired his daughter because she wore a long braid for her prom. I don't know if he was trolling me or not, but she did wear a long braid. But yeah, I want to be Deion Sanders. That's what I want to do. That's dope. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, Bianca, a few more things. Um. If you could finish this statement for me, uh, don't be scared because. Oh, don't be scared because it's always going to work out the way it's supposed to work out. It is. Don't be scared. It's always going to work out the way it's supposed to work out. And if you don't do it, then it, it ain't never going to work out. 
because <laughs> you ain't making no moves. <laughs> Don't be scared because it's, it's always going to work out the way it's supposed to work out. You can always turn anything around. Um, man, I used to tell my mom, I remember my mom one time asked me what my biggest fear was. And I told her it was my decisions and my choices. And it's true, but you can make a decision, you can make a choice, but you can always turn it around. So the best way is to just move forward and try. You know, it, it's always, it always work out as long as you just keep moving forward. Oh, definitely, definitely. Last thing, what does it mean to be a champion? What does it mean to be a champion? I would say it's um, it's incorporating everything. It's it's mental. It's having a championship mentality. It's physical. Uh, working hard to you know be the champion physically. Um, but it's it's just being a it's a it's being a leader. And, you know, being in your own lane, being a leader, um, working hard, never giving up. Uh, you can some, I feel like sometimes you can you can lose and still have a championship mentality. You can still be a champion in the situation. It's really how you react to certain situations. It has, it's how you react to your downfalls. Uh, it's how you recuperate. Um, that to me, that's being a champion is always never, never giving up and always figuring out how to land on your two feet and leading and also pulling people up like you can be a champion but if you're not pulling anybody up with you or bringing you know propelling somebody along the way or eventually passing the torch that's not a champion to me that's a word that's a word well look bianca thank you thank you so much for coming on speak with us here on the now star studio uh we appreciate your words we appreciate your time continue to inspire uplift and motivate everybody out there uh before we go is there is there anything we should be uh, looking looking forward to from you next. You got anything else? You know, um, I'm just you know watch Sunday Night Football on NBC and on Peacock. Uh, we got Fast Lane coming up uh, Saturday. Uh, maybe hopefully I'll be back on SmackDown sometime soon. Uh, in the coming future, we got me and my husband. We got, we have a Hulu show coming out, a reality series. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, just a lot of exciting things uh, for the future. Well, if y'all heard it here first, thank you again so much, Bianca. We appreciate your time and thank you again. Thank you so much.